CBT News on location in Las Vegas for the 2020 NADA show. How's the NADA show going for you so far? This is the busiest NADA we've ever had. This wow. has been just a tremendous event thus far. Congratulations yeah. to you and your team on that. Yeah, thank you. A lot that, of hard work, preparation, yeah. and all, it all paid off. Sure. Last time we talked, you were getting ready to launch Max BDC. What's been the early reaction on that? It's been great so far. So okay. we, uh, we launched it with some current customers prior to the event uh, okay. here, but this is the official launch is literally today, this okay. morning. Okay. Um, I, I couldn't even tell you how many dealers we had come by the booth and do a demo. It's been a phenomenal response. We've had some, uh, several people sign up today. Really? Um, so wow. yeah, it's, it's been great. So it's really, That's it's great. designed to solve a, a you know, a, an actual problem uh, sure. that we have in the industry right now. So yeah, let's great. drill down and talk a little bit about that. Tell me, uh, it seems that to, uh, uh, there's an off, often there's a tension between BDC and sales teams. How does this product help that? It really helps uh, the BDC, the sales department, and the customer collaborate. So we say it's okay. a three-way collaboration okay. tool. And so there's there's a lot of, uh, a bit of a contentious relationship, I'll call it, between the BDC and the sales department usually because they're trying to set an appointment. Right. The customer uh, is hoping that everything that they talked about with the BDC agent gets conveyed to the salesperson, yep. Yep. which unless they take insanely copious notes <laughs> in the CRM, which they don't, right? right? So it doesn't happen. So then the salesperson's frustrated. The, the customer, most importantly, is frustrated. It doesn't work out for anybody. So right. we've designed this tool that allows, you know, whoever that first point of contact is, and right. typically it's a BDC agent. Yeah. We've, we've allowed them to answer the questions that the customer actually has okay. versus rely on somebody else or rely on a, a word track okay. to help get them around a, a tense situation. Gotcha. So um, does this help dealerships prepare for the future? I mean, does this kind of work its way into digital retailing so that everybody's working cohesively together on the customer's behalf? Yes, definitely. I think, you know, one of the interesting things that I like to make a point of is saying that this is not a buy now button on a website. This okay. is not a tool that's designed to replace your salespeople, right? right? Right. And I think that's what we look for sometimes in the industry is we look for the silver bullet that's oh, yeah. going to make the it really fix. easy that oh, if, no I, if I buy this software, if I put it on my website, <laughs> I just sell more cars. It's that's great, right? right? And, right. And some people even sell their tools like that, which is unfortunate, right? Yeah, but yeah. It, it just doesn't exist. That's so right. this is a tool that's designed to help equip your salespeople, your BDC people with uh, the right information, the right technology that helps okay. provide a better customer experience. Okay, okay. And that's what it's all about today is a good customer so, experience, right? You absolutely. don't have that, you might as well close the doors of your dealership, right? That's it, that's the only thing that separates you from your competition, right? We yeah. all sell cars, right. we all service cars, right? That's so right. if you provide a better experience, that's your brand, that's 100%. you. I think it's probably one of the things that the industry is learning from companies and disruptors like Carvana and Vroom, that right. that customer says, I can bypass that, that showroom experience and just buy a car online. Right. And I think the takeaway is that we got to be treating our customers a lot better than we've done in the past. You're right, because I think we, we've uh, taken the consumer's feedback that they want to buy a car like they buy something on Amazon. And right. it's not. It's that I don't want a bad experience so bad that I'm willing to do more myself. That's a good point. And so they yeah. really just want a better experience. And yeah. it's been so bad historically as a whole. There's some dealers that do a tremendous job providing a phenomenal experience, right? Yeah. As a whole the industry hasn't done a great job consistently of providing an experience. Right. And that's why there's some disruptors that have come into the yeah, environment sure. to do it. How do you see the, uh, the role of the BDC changing as we move forward? I think the BDC is going to become an ever important role, right? When it comes to marketing, we talk a lot about attribution, right? Yeah. Um, but when we talk about sales and actually who had the most, um, who, who gets the most credit for the sale, who, right. who participated the most in the transaction, right? I think historically we've given salespeople a ton of credit, we've oh, yeah. given salespeople a ton of pay, That's right. and we've given BDC people a lot less credit and a lot less pay. Yeah. And I think when you look at models like Carvana and you see that they are really one big BDC. Yeah, they, they right? really are, I would agree with that. When we look at how do we better equip our first responders, so to speak, for consumers, which is your BDC, how do we yeah. better equip them? They can become a lot larger part of the sale and a lot more yep. important part of the sale. Yeah, and they have to. I mean, that's- Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how do you ensure the BDC or the team that is playing that first contact role uh, is doing the job that you want them to be doing? That's a good question. I think a lot of this has to do with clear expectations and leadership, right? Yeah. So you, you've really got to set clear expectations and you've got to take the time to uh, inspect what you expect. It's right. like saying that all of us have heard no matter oh, what yeah. industry Absolutely. you're in, right? Yep. Uh, and, and unfortunately it doesn't get done a lot. Sometimes it gets delegated 
Um, but if you haven't taken the time to mystery shop your own store, yeah. you know, if you're the owner, you're the GM, you're yeah. the sales manager, you're even the BDC manager. I agree. You need to mystery shop your own store. You need to check out your own website to make sure yeah. everything's functioning I, properly. I Couldn't agree more. And, and what I knew from spending a lot of time in retail, when yeah. I got out of the retail environment and I, I came to work at Max Digital, mm -hmm. I needed to buy two cars in the same year. And when I actually got to go through the experience myself and see how <laughs> awful and painful it was right. at probably right. 10 different dealerships that yep. I shopped at. Isn't that incredible? I realized it was just right. such a huge industry problem. Right. And what year was that? This is over the last year I did the this. The last year, so we're yeah, talking 2018, 2019. 2018, 2019. And, yeah, that's, and, and, and you would think with all the technology and all that we've learned, this kind of stuff is still happening at right. showrooms. Right? I, I, I literally still had a guy tell me when I was trying to get uh, an expedition for my wife, yeah. he said, you know, the best price and the best payment are still in the store, so if you want to know what they are, we're going to have to have you come in. And I'm like, this oh isn't 1992, come oh on. God. You know, we have to really be transparent yeah. and answer people's questions. That's it's right. just that simple. That's right. We, you know, we talk about trusting the, the consumer, and, and transparency, but when push comes to shove, we don't really trust the customer. That right. they're gonna, if you treat them right, they're gonna come in to you. What's right? that fear? We wanna control them, we wanna put them through the traditional road to the sale, right? That's right. Because we That's trust right. our process, yep. but it's proven that con consumers don't like it, customers don't like it. That's right. And, and it's, it, the results are getting worse over time. So we yeah. focused a lot of our time, effort, and energy on yeah. filling the upper funnel of the pipeline, right? right. It's marketing, yep. driving more traffic, drive more traffic. Yep. That's important. Dealers are addicted to it. But we got to focus on once we get the traffic in yeah. the store, what do we do with it? So That's that right. middle of the funnel, lower part of the funnel. Absolutely. No question about it. Mike Cavanaugh, Executive Vice President for Max Digital. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hopefully uh, tomorrow, day two here at NADA is just as successful as day one for you. I know it will be. So, yeah, that's great. That's great. Again, Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.